I'm Simon Welsh, a uh, poet, and I'm here at uh, the Mind Body Spirit Festival at Earl's Court. It's a beautiful day. I'm running a workshop between four and six this afternoon, and in the meantime, I'm just going to go around and chat people up, tell them some poems, and see if they'd like to come along to the workshop. <laughs> Green and yellow fields neath a molten orange sky and a man with eyes so soulful they made Aidan want to cry. He was sitting on an outcrop looking out towards the sea so intensely Aidan wondered, are you looking out at me? Yes, I am, the figure said. I thought you'd never ask. But why is it you cover up so much behind your mask? I don't wear a mask, said Aidan knowing that he lied. Yes, you do, the angel said. It's where you always hide. You wear it like a shield so they don't know how you feel. You may think this is safer, but it means that nothing's real. Dave the angel put his arm around the young man's shoulder. I can see that though you're young, your soul is eons older. You think my world is beautiful, but all this came from you. You're the one that painted it, and this you know is true. But painting isn't governed by the palette or the brush, and people in your world are often caught up in the rush. They think that life's this race and has a final destination, but the journey is the key, because the journey is creation. I'm going to move on with some of my thoughts. Um, one of the things I've come up against quite a lot of in my sort of quest for spiritual truth, and you know, a lot of people are on this quest, I want the truth, I want to know, is conspiracy theories, yeah? Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Illuminati, government cover-ups, UFO sightings, money being rigged, governments being rigged, you know, you can read all about it and get bogged down by it, you can read all about it and say it's irrelevant. Can I just ask if there a show of hands for people who have read conspiracies about things like 9-11, uh, David Icke's stuff about the royal family being lizards, you know, all of them, chemtrails in the sky. We all familiar with these sorts of topics? Has anyone read these things and been scared by them because they might be true? Could you raise your hands for that? One. But two, two honest people. <laughs> Three, four, five. Okay, so I went on this quite dark journey looking into these things and I sort of contaminated myself a little bit and then I realized I wanted to write my way out of this dark space that I'd got myself into through my research and into a space of light. So this is a poem dedicated to anyone who's ever researched conspiracy theories, believes they may be true, wants to keep them in their consciousness, but does not want to be scared by them anymore. Okay? It's called Friend or Foe. <sighs> NASA says the planet's safe, that there's no need to worry. And yet the world seems poised for change and in a massive hurry. America is sending troops to fight the Middle East. The convicts at Guantanamo have still not been released. Financial stocks are falling fast. Dollar, euro, pound. Questions in the sky and yet no answers on the ground. Is Elenin the sign the Hopi elders call Kachina? Is Obama African or half Egyptian, half hyena? Was 9-11 an inside job to push the Patriot Act? How many other cities in the world will be attacked? Who exactly are the who 
Is their agenda clean? Are they putting poisonous gases in the air that can't be seen? Is it true that HIV is not a real disease? Was the lunar landing staged? Will someone tell me, please? I do not mean to sound like a freak or a fanatic, and I know I have this tendency to lean towards dramatic, but something really isn't right upon our little home. We can hide ourselves in incense, dreadlocks, build our geodome, but something's coming, something big. Will aliens arrive? Do we all have to go to Denver airport to survive? Is Queen Elizabeth a frog? Is David Icke insane? Do the Anunnaki want to flush our spirit down the drain? If the end is near, then should I stop watching porn? As we near galactic zero, will we be reborn? Why do they put fluoride in the water that we drink? Why did they ban magic mushrooms? What do people think? When I look around, I see a system near collapse, but mostly I'm not scared because I know the truth. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> it's not a guarantee, and it may not work for you, but I'd like to share it now if you're prepared to hear me through. I know that I've been ranting, but I've got a point to make. This is only my opinion, but it makes me feel awake. None of it is relevant, all these epic questions. No one has the answers. At our best, we have suggestions. The future isn't written. It is ours to craft and shape it makes no difference if we came from alien or ape. The world could blow apart, or we could be enslaved by a microchip that switches off if we're not well behaved. The golden age could start today, soft and slow to tease us. <laughs> it could turn out that we're immortal. That would surely please us. But whether it's a suitcase nuke, a riddle, or a lie, the price for being human is the body seems to die. But body death is not the end. This life is just a fraction of what's really going on in this cosmic chain reaction. The Earth is rising constantly to meet a new vibration, a density that's bringing forth the age of co-creation. I think we're all rising with it. Does this feel true? The end times are aligning us so we can all get through? I think the age of separation's coming to an end. The cosmic heart is waking. Intuition is our friend. So, though we're still perplexed by questions, ego-driven doubt, the ego is a tool that I could not do without. When I let my heart's vibration tell my ego gently that I do not need a bigger penis or to drive a Bentley, it also tells my ego that its help is now required and please to stop this fighting, as we're all a little tired. Heart can drive the instrument I call the human being. Ego can co-navigate and help the heart with seeing. Heart can help the ego feel, always be in flow, and together they will co-create the world I wish to know. When I think of life like this, those questions do not matter. Answered questions only serve the need for ego chatter. The truth is that we do not need to know the ins and outs. All we need to do is let the heart dispel our doubts. Thank you very much. One thing that we often forget about as we're sort of going through this, this whole quest is that if we believe time is a, a quantum construct, rather than a linear construct. Obviously, in linear terms, yesterday's already happened, yeah? Tomorrow hasn't happened yet. We're just here now, and we're moving through, and time always moves in one direction, which is forward, right? Quantum, the implication of self in a quantum universe, means that every you that has ever been, from the day that you were born up until now, still exists in the moment as a subconstruct of who you are now. So the you that was four years old, you're still carrying that four-year-old around within you, and you age six, and you age 10, and 15, and so on. 
And sometimes we move into situations in the world which trigger us because they remind us of situations that we experienced probably for the first time when we were 15, when we were 10, when we were five. And what happens is our whole human being is filled with the, the, the sub-personality of that younger version of self and you find yourself acting out, having a tantrum, crying. Um, and, and what happens also is that you lose your access to all the knowledge that you've gained since that time in your life. So in a sense, you become quite powerless. And it's in that powerlessness that we can, we have the opportunity to surrender to vulnerability in a way that remembers our sense of self from childhood up until now. And it's not just about remembering, it's about remembering bringing all those parts of you back together so that you actually meet the world as a whole. And I find this a very useful analogy, talking about shopping. People are always okay to hear a poem about shopping because they don't think it's going to make them think too deeply about don't really like poetry. Yeah, shopping's all right. Is it? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this piece is called <laughs> Happy Shopper. Shopping's a delight for me, <laughs> a thing I love to do. But I do not shop for others, so I cannot shop for you. Things no longer happen to me. Now they happen for me. I'm loving every moment. And the moments, they adore me. Everything that happens is a thing that I have bought. Every single action, every single thought. So when a moment brings me disappointment, grief, or shame, I do not shop for justice or for pity or for blame. I remember that I shopped for this experience at hand and I, I let those feelings run through me like water through the sand. All of us are shopping. It's a thing we love to do. We can shop for what is false or we can shop for what is true. And when we know we're shopping and this moment is the shop, we can choose the final word and the very last full stop. 